Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Silent Voices. I'm your host, Carol Kramer. I'm a licensed therapist in the state of Michigan. I've worked with families and children in Michigan as a therapist for over 40 years. Today, we're continuing our story from last week's episode that we had with John. For those who may have missed the episode, John shared his experience of abuse from his stepfather and the severe abuse of his younger sister that was abused also by the same stepfather. Joining us today is Nancy. And of course, we're not using Nancy's real name. Nancy is another sibling of John, and she would like to share her story. She's an older sister of John, and she's going to tell us today about the abuse that she received from this very same stepfather. I've known Nancy since 1997. She came to my office with her mother because she was dealing with the issue of a stepfather with whom she was having many issues. These issues had been reported to the police and nothing had been done about them. Some of them were not even investigated. During the time of therapy with me, Nancy suffered much physical and emotional abuse from that stepfather. She was a young teenager at the time. I'm going to ask Nancy to share with us many of her memories of that abusive stepfather who in the end, after all this abuse went on, was awarded custody of Nancy's younger siblings. And so Nancy, I'd like you to maybe start right from the beginning. And if you would be so kind try to go back, and I know this isn't an easy experience for you, but I think it's an important way to regain some of your power and share with the audience some of your early memories that um, happened. For example, uh, your stepfather came into your life, moved into the household, and tell me, what is, some, what, what is one of the very first memories that you have? Um, one of the very first memories that I have um, was I was upstairs in my bedroom at the time and could hear my younger brother, John, who was about three years old, um, crying and screaming hysterically for my mom, who was gone at the time. And so I rushed downstairs to see what was going on and walked into the living room to see him being held down by my ex-stepfather. Um, I don't know why he was doing what he was doing, but he was being held down with such force that he ended up with bruises all over his arms. Um, Which, excuse me, was your brother crying at the time? Yeah, he was crying for my mom. He just wanted, you know, to get away from him. And um, after I said something, you know, he let him go. Obviously, he didn't want me to continue after I showed up. But um, mm -hmm. that would be one of the very first traumatic mm -hmm. experiences that I encountered. Mm -hmm. um, the second memory I have was um, one time when I didn't return home from school. I was supposed to ride the, I don't know, I don't even remember. I was supposed to ride the bus home and I ended up riding the bus to my friend's house. Uh, she lived in a trailer park because um, I was scared to go home for one thing or another, it was hard to keep track of why mm -hmm. I really, you know, there were so many incidences that I, I don't remember why exactly I didn't go home at this point, but um, 
he eventually found where I was and um, I was hiding in a friend of mine's trailer crying and screaming hysterically. Why were you hiding? Uh, because he scares me. <laughs> Did you know he was coming? Did yeah. you not hide until you saw him? No, it, it, as soon as I saw the car coming down the road to turn into the trailer park, I took off running mm -hmm. um, into my friend's house and then, um, you know, their parents didn't really know what was going on and then Ron came, I mean, mm -hmm. he came to the door and um, tried talking to their parents and they ended up calling the police and the police basically told him that he could remove me in any way that he could you know just to get me out of there because I was there was no way I was going to go willingly mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so he hung up the phone and grabbed me by my hair and pretty much drug me down the stairs my head hit the stairs every way every you know on the way down Tell um, me a little bit more about that. How would your, <clears throat> if he had you by the hair, mm -hmm. how would your head have hit well, the steps? when you're flailing and, you know, kicking mm -hmm. and screaming and, you know, kind of let go and then he would mm -hmm. grab it again and then he just picked me up and threw me in the back seat of the car after dragging me away from the house, you know, and, and I had tried to say, oh, I need to go get my books, I need to go get this, just trying to get away from him. And he wasn't having it. Told me I could get my books for school later. Threw me in the back of the car. <clears throat> and then on the way home, we lived out in the country, so there was a lot of, you know, swamps or what have you. Um, he stopped on the side of the road and made me get out of the car. What time of the year was this? What season? Um, I think it was fall, right around the beginning of the school year. I was in sixth grade at the time. Uh -huh. um, stopped in the side of the road. I didn't really know you know what was going on all, all he said is you know to get out of the car and so I got out of the car and he said every action what, what did he say something about every action has a consequence whether it be a positive one or a negative one either way you know you're gonna get something good or whatever anyways he <clears throat> drug me down a little hill and told me that if I fuck with my mother he's gonna fuck with me and he pushed me into a swamp Excuse me, why did this have something to do with your mom? <clears throat> I don't know. That's why I don't, I don't know if I had gotten into an argument with my mom or if I dis did something to disobey. You know, I was a teenager who, you know, mm -hmm. that's what teenagers do, you know. So you had on what, your jeans and a shirt? I had or? on, um, yep, I had on a pair of blue jeans and a yellow shirt. And um, he pushed me in the swamp, and I started screaming. I didn't know what I was, you know. I really didn't know if he was going to kill me or, if, you know, what he was doing. I was terrified for my life. Every was, time. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh huh. Was the car still running? The, yeah, the car was still up by the road running. Um, every time I got back up, he would push me back in, and he did that about five times. <clears throat> excuse me. Was there water in the swamp? Yeah, I was soaked, head to toe, muddy. He grabbed a stick and hit me on my back a couple times with the stick and then... Did he push you forward <clears throat> into the water? Mm -hmm. He pulled you out of the car and he pushed you he forward down He brought me down to the, to the edge of the swamp and he, he was facing the swamp and he turned me around so my back was to the water. And he stood me right in front of him and that's when he said what he said, I don't remember. Right, but when every he, action has a reaction or yeah. something like mm -hmm. that. Uh -huh. And then he pushed me in so I went in, you know, my back back first and then every time you know I started screaming and right you know going cold crazy. Water. yeah and then every time I got back up he pushed me back in and he did that five times and then he had this big stick and he hit me a couple times with that and then brought me back to the car and s stood me in the back of the car and said if you're gonna if you fuck with your mother I'm gonna fuck with you and then um, I didn't say it loud enough I had to repeat it back to him so then I had to scream scream that back to him basically and then he let me get back in the car and what then, the stick? Where did the stick come from? I don't know. Probably just, I mean, it's a swamp full of... So he just picked a stick out. It's mm -hmm. nothing he had in the no. car no. pre-planned. Right. He just picked up a stick <clears throat> and hit you. Mm -hmm. Did you have bruises from that stick? Um, yeah, actually, there is a police report on file at the Sparta police station, or rather there should be. Mm -hmm. Who knows if it's still there or mm -hmm. if it, you know... The conveniently police came disappeared. To your house about no, this? I was brought to the police station. I actually had to strip down to my underwear so they could take pictures of the marks and the bruising. Um, 
like I said, I don't know if that is still there, if it has conveniently disappeared. I know that um, my stepfather's father mm -hmm. is a friend of um, one of the police officers there in Sparta. They used to have coffee every weekend. So um, That makes you wonder if maybe the right, pictures are still there or not. How did nothing, it even happen that you got to the police station? Who brought you? Uh, my dad did, my biological father. I see. And he brought you when you his, gave the yep. report. When I went to him for his designated weekend visitation, mm -hmm. you know, I Sounds like him. he was alarmed. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What happened um, next then? What's the next incident? Nothing really happened with that incident. I went to live with my dad for a while and then moved back. Um, he used to do things like if uh, my room wasn't clean enough or, you know, he just wasn't satisfied with the way it was clean, he would empty every drawer in my room, in my dresser, in my desk, take all of the clothes out of the closet, shoot, and just the room would look like a complete tornado had just went through there. Is, excuse me, your stepfather was in the service, in the military? Mm-hmm. He was a Marine. Okay, and so he was a pretty good-sized guy. He was, yes. All right, and so he would maybe inspect your room. Mm hmm and then if it wasn't the way he wanted it perfectly, right. if I understand you correctly, he would just take one drawer after another and dump, dump them upside them down. Yep, flip oh. the mattress over, take the clothes out of the closet. Off the, the hangers and the whatever? Floor. yep. And throw it all over? Yep, make a bigger mess than what was there before because he didn't like how it was cleaned before. It doesn't really make a lot of sense if you're normal, but. Abuse doesn't make a lot of sense to yeah. <laughs> many people. Right. So that had to be very terrifying. So yeah. then you had to stay in your room until it was cleaned up? Mm-hmm. And then he would come back again for an inspection? Mm-hmm. And, you know, if it wasn't sad, you know, it was just un until it was the way he wanted it. Um, I, I got it right after, you know, the first time because I didn't want it to happen again. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that was just a couple of things. Another incident that um, is pr pretty vivid in my mind is when I had taken my mom's tennis shoes uh, to school because mm -hmm. I think I like them better than mine or mm -hmm. some reason, who knows. And um, when he confronted me about it, I lied, mm -hmm. which, you know, again, I'm a teenager and I'm terrified of the man, so mm -hmm. I lied. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, he obviously had already known that I had taken them and when I lied, he put me over his knee like you would a small child and spanked my butt. And um, How old were you? 13 years old. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that was kind of weird. That would be very embarrassing and very uh, inappropriate, I would think. Inappropriate, mm -hmm. yes. And then um, he had a drawer full of like the little travel size soaps that you would get at a hotel. Right. And I was told that I had to go pick out three bars of soap and then I had to sit at the kitchen table while he watched me eat them. And wow. I literally had to chew and swallow. No, no water, nothing to drink. Aww. <clears throat> it was not very appetizing. But think it would make you ill. I don't know much about eating soap. My but... tongue was swollen for about three days after that. Wow. Yeah. That was not reported to the police? No. Okay. Nope. I mean, mm -hmm. what's, what's the point if they're not going to do anything? You kind of just... Right. Nothing was done before, so... Yeah. Okay, and then there was another Oh, uh, there was incident. another incident. I don't really remember what um, started the whole ordeal mm -hmm. because, like I said, so many things had happened at, mm -hmm. kind of at this point so many years later. I don't know. Um, he was mad at me for something, maybe being disrespectful. Right. Probably was, you know, mm -hmm. talking back. And um, he brought me outside and was dragging me around outside, and my older brother, Gary, had to come in between him and I because he thought that he was going to hurt me. So then my brother got involved, and um, he eventually calmed down mm -hmm. uh, after them, you know, a screaming match between the both of them. But, you know, it's just... So your older brother had to come in to protect you because was he drag your stepfather was dragging you on the ground? Mm hmm I had both of my arms like by the wrist. Wow. Dragging, yeah. He was Wow, there wasn't much you could do once he got no. his arms on you if he was mm -mm, there wasn't a big much you could guy. do at all once he got Okay. Mad. 
And then you had one more incident, didn't you, that just for the purpose of this um, uh, interview that you were willing to share, and that had to do with something that occurred uh, when your mother and you were out of town and you returned? Right, we were in Indiana for a youth group trip and um, we came home and as I was changing my sister's diaper, this was actually the older of the two, she was not yet potty trained, mm -hmm. um, and my mom was uh, assisting my other younger sister. I really wasn't aware what was going on when it happened, what was happening, but my mom had come out to me and said, you know, we got to get everything together. We need to go down to Children's Assessment Center because Abby just, I mean, mm -hmm. Annie just, um, mm -hmm. you know, just disclosed some information to me. Uh, she said that her dad had sexually assaulted her, and we mm -hmm. went down to have the girls examined. Um, they took pictures and talked to the girls for quite a while. Um, one thing I would like to add about that whole situation is um, when they went to court, and I, what I mean by they is my mother, to fight for custody of my sisters, the pictures that they took the day that we brought them to the um, Children's Assessment Center, mm -hmm. the pictures that they took of the abuse uh, have conveniently disappeared. So we weren't able to use, my mom was not able to use that in her um, case. However, what you're telling me, if I understand it correctly, <clears throat> is that you were with your mother yes. and the two girls, yes. and you were in the room <clears throat> when the doctor took the photographs. Yes, I saw them with my own eyes. Of the, of the girls, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and particularly of your younger sister, uh, who was saying that her, her father, your stepfather, had cut her sexual organs with a knife. Right. Okay. Which I had to actually look at with my own eyes. It's not something I ever wanted to see. That must have been a really tough or and traumatic even. time for you to see that and have a lot of empathy for your little sisters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah. You're looking very sad. It sounds like you still feel a lot of grief about that even today. Uh, well, mm -hmm. considering where my sisters are, they're with him. I'm almost positive the abuse has not stopped, and it's hard to not be able to do anything to help them. Yes. It must be a feeling of hopelessness and helplessness that the court awarded your little sisters to that man that you knew was abusive. You knew he was abusive to both of your brothers and to your two younger sisters. Yeah. Yes. And that, that's got to be tough, and that's why we're doing this today. I don't know if anybody out there in the viewing audience is going to be able to help um, or come forward with some kind of suggestions about what might be done, but it certainly is true, and I recall it vividly, that a grave injustice was done. Is there anything else, Nancy, uh, that you'd like to add for the viewing audience, anything you'd like that you'd like to ask them? Um, just if there is anyone out there that is willing and able to help, um, my sisters really need to help. Uh, they don't need to be in the environment that they're in. They did nothing to deserve any of the abuse that they've suffered, and there's only so much I can do. Right. And we really just need help. You know, Nancy, as you were talking, what occurred to me is that it's been a number of years since this happened. Mm -hmm. And have you had any contact with your sisters? Um, you? No, I, there was maybe two, time, <clears throat> two times that I got to see them when I went with my mother with, to her visits. Um, but other than that, I haven't really been able to see them. I did, however, just recently just show up out there to where they live with my brother John um, for my sister Amy's birthday we brought her some mm -hmm. balloons and some presents and 
um, actually got their phone numbers. Um, and probably about 30 seconds after I left, um, Abby just called me and to let me know that, um, you know, her dad was upset about, probably not 30 seconds, but it was, I wasn't even <clears throat> down the road into the stop sign before I had a message on my phone. Annie was telling me um, that her father was upset about me showing up there without calling and without asking. Um, and then I had asked them if I could maybe come and pick them up and take them to the beach or go out to eat or just hang out with my sisters um, because I should be allowed to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was told that um, he told Annie that I, if I went out there and picked them up that either their dad or their grandmother had to come with us wherever we went. Um, and that if I did ever go out there, I would have to call first and get permission. So really, um, I can't do anything unless he says that I can. And for him to give me the permission to do that is, you know, probably slim to none. It's not going to happen. I don't believe he wants me anywhere near either of them for fear that, you know, things will start coming out and he could get caught for what he did, which he should have been caught a long time ago. Do you fear him yet today? Yes, do you, I do. Do you fear just <clears throat> as abused children will fear uh, something might happen, even though you're coming here today and your identity is being camouflaged in many ways, um, do you still have that fear? I do. Uh, there, with people like that who are so mentally and unstable, there's really no telling what they're capable of or what they might do if they just go off the deep end, you know, if they fear that they're going to get caught or, you know, things are going to start coming out, people will do crazy things to keep secrets. So, yeah, I'm scared. You fear for your own safety in many ways. And the safety of my son and mm -hmm. the people that I love in my life, yeah. I can understand Especially that. for my sisters, more than anything, to be honest with you, because who knows what he would do to keep them quiet. Right. Um, I lose sleep over it. It's not... It, there's sure. not a day that hasn't gone by that I haven't, you know, thought about it or not tried to think about it right. for that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, yeah. Well, it's one of the things that you didn't know was that even though I was working with you uh, originally as just a blended family, that when all this came out, I continued to work in the background and this always became, this case uh, became a special case on my heart and my mind. Uh, especially because I was working at that time with the pediatricians. And your mother had signed a release for the pediatricians to have them send me their records. Mm -hmm. And all the way through the pediatricians' records, they had mentioned sexual abuse and they had even mentioned that your brother had told them about his sexual abuse. And they had sent in reports of that to the uh, Department of Social Services. I had sent in reports of that to the department. And what was so amazing to me, and I want the viewing audience to know this, that none of the pediatricians' reports None of my reports were ever even requested until I finally sent them a letter asking why they hadn't requested them. Finally, after the whole case was done and your younger siblings were awarded away from your mother and for the family, then the DHS, after the fact, asked me to send my records to them. Hmm. And it's like, why do you want my records now? I don't know if the pediatrician ever, and there were two pediatricians involved, and we had been working together because we felt the DHS was doing nothing. Mm -hmm. But as it ended up, it mattered not that we as professionals were involved. Yeah. Because for whatever reason, the judge, the DHS, and the guardian ad litem, they had made up their own mind. Yeah, the whole... And, uh, right. I was just going to say, the whole 
case, I mean, to sit there with it in front of you in black and white, like I said, someone who's normal with a fully functioning mm -hmm. brain, if they read it, would see this is not right. Nothing that was done was right. It was all wrong, all illegal. Right. It's not right. And so today, that's why we're here, folks. We are trying to make a wrong right. And we thank you for that. I want to thank you for your bravery, your courage to come forward here. I know it's been really rough for you after all these years. And uh, what we're going to do is ask the viewing audience once again if they have any ideas of ways that they think that they can help, offer help. We're going to show um, at the end of the show here on the screen some addresses so all of you can see them and please feel free to contact uh, those addresses, the email addresses and um, we know on silent voices that there are some outside loud voices that can help to heal so many of these broken lives. We're counting on you. You are the folks that can come in and make yourself available in whatever way you can and give some real help, courage, and strength to all these people. We want to thank you for joining us. Uh, please plan to be with us again in the future as we're running this entire series uh, for not only the benefit of the family, but for the awareness of the viewing public. Thank you very much. This is Carol Kramer, uh, the host of the show, and I hope that you all will come back again and watch this show on Silent Voices. Thank you. <laughs>